Hello everyone and welcome to Death Mute Studio. In this series review I'm going to be talking about Amazon Prime's Them, which is available to watch on Amazon Prime. I didn't need to clarify that, did I? Them is created by Little Marvin who's best known for, well, Them. From what I could see online, he's not written anything else. And was an executive producer on something called Time Is Now back in 2006, which I've, I've never heard of before. Which is strange because all the trailers mention him by name as if he's a, he's a well-known creator like, I don't know, Jordan Peele. Them stars Deborah Ayarindi as Livia Emery, Ashley Thomas as Henry Emery, Shahadi Wright Joseph as Ruby Lee Emery, Emily Heard as Gracie Emery, and Alison Pill as Betty Wendell, as well as a number of other people in supporting roles. But I'm not going to go through the entire cast list, I'm, I'm not made of time. They're the main players in this show and they're the ones I'm going to be mentioning most in this review. To the plot! Them is a limited anthology series that explores terror in America. The first season, and only so far because it's the first season, which goes by the name of Covenant and is set in the 1950s and centres around a black family who move from North Carolina to an all-white Los Angeles neighbourhood during the period known as the Great Migration. The family's idyllic home becomes ground zero where malevolent forces, both neighbours and otherworldly, threaten to taunt, ravage and destroy them. On the surface, them looked like it was going to be another entry in this new black orientated horror renaissance along with Get Out, Us and Lovecraft Country. Which it is, in a way. But is it taking what Jordan Peele has essentially started and adding another unique voice from the black creative community? The reason I say this is that the show is operating in a socio-political horror realm, like American Horror Story but from the black perspective. So. Let's have it. Them is essentially a tale of two themes, race and trauma. And it's a show that struggles to juggle or entwine both in into one story. It's almost as if it changes its mind to what it really wants to be. A drama about the struggles of a black family in a white and extremely racist suburbia. Or a supernatural tale of a demonic entity that is feeding of the past trauma of of an unfortunate family. I think it operates more effectively as, as the former. So let's start with that. One of the main hooks of the show is basically, did you know a neighborhood that is steeped in black culture used to be fiercely white? That neighborhood being Compton, California, which was a oh sh really moment for, for me and what I can imagine most people. Which is a great hook because that area is famous all around the world for its black community and and what it's offered to music and, and general pop culture. As hooks go, it's, it's a good one, but it offers more as it goes into other important details of, of black history during the 1950s, which still and unfortunately resonates today. I've already mentioned racism, but it goes into other things such as the Great Migration, segregation, and what I found extremely fascinating and I had completely no idea about was was redlining. If you don't know what redlining is by the way and you're interested in finding out, I've put a link in the description below. If you're like me and you haven't heard of it before, I recommend you check out the link. It's unbelievable that it was actually a thing. Now already that's that's a lot to work with and for me that's that's more than enough. Dare I say it's, it's an abundance of elements for a 10 episode season and that's one of the issues with them. Despite its near total 10 hour runtime, it mentions these things but never finds the time to really delve into them. And only dedicates one scene to quickly explain what redlining is, because it already has so much going on. Them is essentially pulling back the curtain of the American dream, revealing that it is in fact for black people and any minority, the American nightmare. And that in itself should be the only horror element that you really need. What is scarier than being surrounded by people who don't want you in their community? Actively trying to pressure you out by escalating and deplorable tactics? Or going to a school where everyone openly does monkey impressions at you? With no fear of reprimand or repercussion? Or suffering the trauma caused by a horrifying home invasion? And then being thrown in another highly stressful situation? Every member of the Emery family are already being put through the meat grinder without adding the element of a demonic spirit. Which makes me think that this element of the show's horror is just 
overkill and not necessary to the story whatsoever. The stress of never-ending racism surrounding them would be more than enough to open up their mental wounds and, and force their mask of sanity to slip. What I did think was interesting is that each member of the Emery family have have their own specific ghost, and that ghost is representing that character's deepest fear and trauma. The father, Henry Emery, is haunted by a man called the Tap Dance Man who is kitted up in full minstrel makeup, and this is Henry's fear as being seen as a joke, or just someone to entertain his supposed white superiors, and playing against his pride as a man. The mother, Livia Emery, is haunted by an image of herself, and not being able to save her young baby from the will of evil travelling racists who murdered their baby son just because of the colour of his skin. The eldest daughter is haunted by a white girl who pretends to be a friend because that represents all that she really wants is to be accepted for who she is by everyone around her and live a normal life. You could take the leap in logic that this family would succumb to these visions from from trauma alone. To blame this all on a demonic entity seems to undermine the reality of the Emery situation. It seems like the haunted demonic element of this show was, was a fad inclusion. To create a show similar to American Horror Story, mimicking its success. Especially with the success of Jordan Peele integrating horror and racism so effectively. The horror side of the show wasn't terrible. You can see that it was also heavily influenced by The Shining, but it never handled it as well. Again, the season is roughly 10 hours in total, but it could never get the balance right or, or even the pacing. Each episode seemed to go on longer than it should have and 10 episodes was definitely a stretch for this story, with severe lagging and odd story slash character threads, particularly with Alison Pill's character, whose story completely strays off the path. Them has a lot of issues, but the one thing it does have an abundance of is fantastic performances. The entire Emery family are absolutely incredible in their roles, particularly Deborah Ayerindi, who gives such an intense, raw and honest performance as Livia Emery. Very similar tone to Tony Collette's performance in Hereditary. Alison Pill, who I've not mentioned much, puts in a, a delightfully wicked performance as a white supremacist mega bitch with a, with a troubled past. Honestly, with, with her performance, it's more evidence against the need for the demon. She was more than capable of being the main or only antagonist in the story. It's very strange to say, particularly given the topic of the show, there was no joy in this show. No happy ending, no resolution, no character growth. Everything is just soaked in trauma from start to finish. Which I suppose does go with the American nightmare. Racism and inequality still exist. And you only have to look at the news to know what black people and other minorities are, are still going through. But I would have liked to have seen some glimmer of hope in the show. At least some sort of pleasant resolution for the Emery family. But the show just seems to want to pedal this trauma porn. It's exhausting. So that's my review of them. Have you seen it? Do you agree with my review? Let me know on social media and the comment section below. Please support the channel by liking the video and subscribing. It will help me out massively. But most importantly, as ever, thanks for watching. Ta-da.